The 1974 Reading High football team, led by future Hall of Fame coach John Hollingsworth, had high expectations for the team's first Middlesex League title since 1967 after knocking on the door with an 8-1-1 record the prior season. The optimism was duly warranted, as the Reading squad had a quarterback in Tom Dwyer who already had two full seasons under his belt as the starter. There was a wealth of talented returning starters, such as skill position players Ken Hollingsworth, Dave Johnson, Tom Hunt, and defensive lineman Don Rice. The Middlesex League was considered strong from top to bottom and was entering its first year as a Division I league. The Boston Globe may have put some added motivation out there for the Rockets, noting that the league was too strong and balanced for any team to go undefeated, thus most likely eliminating the possibility of a Super Bowl berth coming out of the Middlesex League. The Rockets possessed a two-dimensional offensive attack with record-setting Dwyer throwing downfield to the talented Hollingsworth and Johnson and having an equally potent weapon in Hunt, who is an elite running back, with the strength to run up the middle and the speed to break away on long jaunts. Reading could also claim a third offensive dimension, which would end up playing a big role in a comeback win later in its undefeated regular season, and that was the leg of Ken Hollingsworth, who had deep field goal range and later became a place kicker and record-holding receiver at Williams College. In a league traditionally stocked with good running backs, it was the quality of the offensive lines and defenses that often decided championships, and the Rockets were well positioned in that regard player-wise, and with the leadership of veteran offensive coach Paul Soule and defensive coach Jack White. Steve Gary, Tim Sharkey, Mike Ionelli, John Atwood, and Mike Schloff were stalwarts on both sides of the ball joining Steve Mantia and Kevin LaRocco on the offensive line. On defense, it was the two-way Warriors along with Rice, Tom Radisick, Mark Kirby, and Norm Black in the front seven with the athletic secondary of Jim Shiner, Tom McCarron, Johnson, and Hollingsworth. For the regular season, the defense held the opposition to 74 points and gave up more than one touchdown in a game only three times and never more than two in a game. The Rockets opened against Marblehead in their lone out-of-league contest. In the 46-6 win, there were immediate signs of the offensive and defensive capabilities of the Reading team. Up next was the start of the grueling nine-game league schedule, starting with the two teams most favored to win the league crown in Woburn and Wakefield. Before a packed house at Birch Meadow Field, Reading faced a heavily favored Woburn team who sported the very big physical advantage on paper and a heralded running back, Joe Shula. As the team battled it out, it was quickly evident that no team was superior to the Rockets when it came to physical play. The Rockets bested Woburn all day in the trenches, gaining an 18-8 first down advantage. However, as the game wound down, that advantage was not reflected on the scoreboard when Shula's touchdown gave the Tanners an 11-7 lead with just two and a half minutes left. What followed the Wuben score can simply be called the drive. Starting from his own 20-yard line, Dwyer completed five straight passes as they led the Rockets deliberately downfield. Then from the five-yard line, and with only 30 seconds left, it was Hunt who carried the ball into the end zone, giving Redding a 14-11 victory. Defending league champ Wakefield was next in a road contest, and with a four-touchdown first-half outburst, the Rockets held off the Warriors 28-16. After a routine win versus Winchester, the Rockets eked out a win in Watertown behind Hunt's career day. The bruising halfback ran for 186 yards and added a 62-yard punt return in a 19-13 victory. Sandwiched between blowout wins versus Melrose and Lexington, Burlington put an unexpected scare into the Rockets at home. On this afternoon, it was Hollingsworth's leg that provided the difference when he booted a 26-yard field goal through the uprights with under five minutes left to play, giving the Rockets a 16-14 victory. It all led up to an unexpected showdown at Belmont High School between two 8-0 teams. Preseason predictions had the Rockets in the title hunt, but the Marauders were expected to be fighting to stay out of the cellar. In a defensive showdown, Reading went up 14-0 in the fourth quarter when an opportunistic hunt recovered a teammate's end zone fumble. Belmont battled back furiously, cutting the lead in half and then recovering a botched punt on Reading's 20-yard line with only 30 seconds left. 
However, future BC Eagle Dave Johnson picked off an end zone pass to seal the victory, his second interception of the day. Redding entered the Thanksgiving Day contest with not only a shot at the Middlesex League title, but a Super Bowl berth for the Division I Super Bowl. Two years earlier on the same field, the Spartans had deprived Redding of a title share and won the Middlesex League crown themselves. But not on this day. With Stoneham focused on stopping Hunt, it was unsung blocking back B.J. O'Brien who ran for 60 yards on 10 carries. It was also fitting that offensive player earned some recognition when Don Rice was awarded an honorable mention as the Boston Globe's Defensive Player of the Week behind future All-Pro Fred Smurlis from Waltham. The 20 to nothing victory sent the Rockets to the postseason with a 10-0 record in the Middlesex League title. In the Super Bowl, Reading faced off with once beaten Natick. The undefeated Rockets stood clearly as the number one team in Eastern Mass as top seed in Division I Super Bowl. Early signs were ominous for the Rockets, from the wind blowing the opening kickoff off the tee to losing their stalwart running back Hunt on their fourth offensive play with an ankle injury. Then Natick proceeded to blitz Reading during a six minute span for an early 20 to nothing lead before the Rockets could get their bearings at BC's Alumni Stadium. Reading would not go down easily as it trailed to one of the few times all year. A Dwyer to Hollingsworth 53 yard touchdown strike right before the half started the momentum swing. After a scoreless third quarter, it was Reading's special teams that put the Rockets within a touchdown of the lead. When Don Rice blocked the field goal attempt, Barry Knox scooped up the loose ball and ran 68 yards down the right sideline making it a 20 to 14 contest. However, a late Redmen touchdown ended the comeback for Reading in a season ending 26-14 Super Bowl loss. At season's end, Hollingsworth, Hunt, Johnson, and Rice receives all league honors. And Dwyer's three year reign ended with a then school record 28 career touchdown passes. Hollingsworth was named all scholastic at wide receiver in both the Boston Globe and Boston Herald newspapers. To go along with an undefeated regular season in Middlesex League title, the 1974 Rockets will always have the special distinction of being Reading's first Super Bowl team and the only Rocket team ever to qualify for a Super Bowl at the Division I level. It is with great pride the RMHS Athletic Hall of Fame welcomes the 1974 football team.